So when it comes to graphics file devices, um, there are basically two broad categories of devices. One is called vector uh, devices or vector formats, and the other format is called bitmap. Um, so vector formats are usually are most useful for things like line graphics. So if you have a scatter plot and maybe you draw a regression line through it, um, these are line graphics. Uh, they don't have they're not like um, natural scenes or images of photographs or things like that. And so these types of graphics are useful are are usefully kind of uh, generated using vector formats uh, because they resize well so if you have to take the image and kind of make it bigger or smaller it, it won't get distorted and the and the quality of the graphic won't be won't suffer um, for example the PDF format is very portable you can use it on almost any platform uh, that's out there right now um, and so it's a good format the general purpose vector format um, vector formats are typically not very good if you have a plot that has like that has a lot a large number of points uh, because every single point has to be represented by a piece of information in the in the in the file format and so the, these files tend to be extremely large um, if you plot a lot of different points to a vector format um, file type um, scalable vector graphics or SVG is a, is a popular format for web-based plots uh, it's useful because it supports things like animation and, and interactivity um, uh, in the plot and and almost all web browsers recognize the SVG format now uh, Windows Metafile is a is, is a, a vector format that's available only on Windows um, and you may see older uh, files lying around that are in the PostScript format. Uh, this is kind of a predecessor to the PDF format. It's not used very often, but you may see it around. In the bitmap format file uh, file formats, uh, there are a few common ones. Uh, probably the most common is PNG, uh, which stands for Portable Network Graphics. Um, the and so basically, bitmap formats are represent uh, plots or images as a series of pixels, essentially. And so um, they are they're very good for uh, uh, for. Uh, plots that are that have lots of different points, uh, where because they'll be very efficiently represented in a bitmap format. Um, they, a PNG is in particular is good for things like line drawings or images with solid colors. Uh, it uses a lossless compression algorithm so that the file sizes tend to be small, and pretty much every web browser can read PNGs now. Uh, so if you so they're good for web web-based plots. Uh, JPEG, you might be familiar with if you have a digital camera or something like that. Um, they're very good for things like natural scenes, uh, which, do, which don't have solid colors, but have kind of lots of like gradients of color. Um, it uses a lossy compression algorithm, uh, so the file sizes are very efficient and very small. And they're also good for, uh, just because it's a bitmap format, it's good for plotting, making plots with lots of points. Uh, bitmap formats in general do not resize well, so when you create a plot and you try to make it bigger or smaller, um, they can distort the quality uh, of the image. And so generally speaking, you should not resize bitmap uh, plots after they've been generated. Uh, JPEGs, of course, can be read by any computer and, and any web browser. Uh, so they're very useful for that kind of for web-based plots. Um, they're not they're not very good for line drawings uh, because uh, if you create a line drawing in P in JPEG, uh, you'll see some aliasing uh, in the lines. TIFF is another older format for uh, uh, for bitmap files. Um, it supports lossless compression. It's a and it's a, and it's very commonly used. Uh, still, uh, BMP is is a native a bitmap format for Windows, uh, and some and it's commonly used for things like icons. Um, so it's possible to open uh, multiple graphics devices, um, and um, so for example, for example, you might want to create three or four different plots to look at at the same time, and the and the way to do that is to have say three or four different screen devices open, um, and um, so the way you can do that is is to is you can launch graphics devices explicitly. Uh, you can launch the screen device, for example, on Mac by calling the quartz function multiple times, and then you'll open multiple graphics devi uh, screen devices. Um, and so, But you can only plot to one device at a time. And so um, the graphics device that you plot to is the active graphics device. And you can figure out which graphics device is the, is the active one by calling the dev.cur function, or dev for, for stands for current. Um, and that function will return an integer um, that will tells you which graphics device is currently active. So every graphics device is ass is assigned an integer that's between two and uh, and two and up basically. Uh, so there's no graphics device that has the number one. So every graphics device gets an integer, and you can change which graphics device is the active graphics device by calling the dev dot set function. And dev dot set takes an integer value, uh, which will switch you to the graphics device uh, that is that corresponds to the integer that you give it. So you can switch back and forth between 
the graphics devices uh, using the dev.set function if you need to. Uh, finally, uh, it's possible to copy plots from one device to another, uh, and this is probably most commonly used uh, when you've created a plot on the screen and you decided that you really like it, uh, and then you want to then you want to put it into a file. Uh, and so there's two ways that you could do this. One is that you could after you if you've saved the code uh, that makes the plot on the screen, you can just um, open up a file device and then cut and paste the code into R and then close the file device, and then you've got your plot in a file. But uh, a faster way, uh, and sometimes more convenient, is to copy the, f the plot from the screen device to the file device. And you can use this with the dev.copy function, which just copies plots from one device from any device to any other device. Um, and then, it, But if you specifically want a PDF file, there is a function called dev.copy to PDF, which will take um, the screen device and copy it to, directly to a PDF file. Um, now it's important to note that copying a plot is not an exact operation, so the, the, the plot that you end up with in the file may not look exactly like the, co the plot that you saw on the screen. So it's, there may be some adjustment that you have to do. Uh, so here's some code that just creates a plot on the screen. Uh, this is the old faithful geyser data that comes with R. Uh, and then I want to copy it to a PNG file. So I want to create a PNG file uh, on my computer that contains the plot that I'm looking at on the screen. So I can call dev.copy. The first argument to dev.copy is the is the function that opens the uh, file device. So in this case, this is the PNG function. Uh, and then I just give it a file name, which is needed to create the file. So I just call it geyserplot.png. And then once I've copied the plot, I still need to close the PNG device uh, with dev.off. So once I call dev.off, there should be a file on my computer that, that's in a, gonna be in a PNG format and I can send it to someone or I can include it in a presentation. So that's a quick summary uh, of the uh, graphics devices in R. Uh, the basic bottom lines are that every plot must be created on a graphics device. Um, and usually this is the screen device, but uh, and it's useful for exploratory analysis. Um, but if you want to preserve a plot or send it to someone, uh, you have to create a plot in a file device. Um, and there are a variety of different file formats that you can use. There are vector formats like PDF. Uh, and SVG, and there are bitmap formats like PNG and JPEG um, that you can choose from.